Hey y'all, it is Glam Gamer Rebecca, and in today's video, we are doing another Steam reaction. This game is called Atomic Hearts. I guess I should move this at this angle since I'm facing this monitor. All right, so this one here is one of the midweek sales or midweek deals. This one is 60% off. It originally retails for $59.99. Um, it is on sale for $23.99. Now this one is only on sale for uh, till July 25th. So you have about seven days to get this one. So that means I have to edit this quick. This is a first person shooter game. Um, this one here, I don't know anything about. I've never even heard of this game. This one did come out, looks like February 20th of 2023. It says, in a mad and sublime utopian world, take part in an explosive encounter. Adapt your fighting style to each opponent. Use your environment and upgrade your weapon or your equipment to fulfill your mission. If you want to reach the truth, you'll have to pay in blood. Recent reviews, there's 451 mostly positive. All reviews is 24,167 very positive. This is from the developer uh, called Mundfish. The publisher is Focus Entertainment and For Divinity. And it says this is a horror. The says sexual content FPS, which is a first person shooter, puzzle and mystery. So let's watch. There are a bunch of different trailers. So let's watch a couple of them. Um, make this full screen. Unfortunately, there are those who wish to crush those dreams. That was creepy. What the hell? And that's where men like you come in, Sergei. What the hell? Did men they have plants up in their face? Mankind and its destiny. I swore that the world would never see its like again. Do you realize what this could mean for us? An international scam. Creepy looking dog. Oh my god. They're not going to find out. The malfunction has been dealt with. The hell was that? Okay, so... Then why did all those peaceful robots start hacking everyone to bits? The entire world will be just like this. Yeah, it's like you're a soldier, Agent like Brune Hilda went fucking Your crazy. To cover me. This place is a damn mad house. It's it's like Nazis and the Russians Zena. like fucking took over Granny and they Zena. got like like zombie plant robots that want to like murder everybody. Um, yeah, they, look at that. They got like plant faces and shit. What the fuck? Oh, bad robot. That's kind of terrifying. Look at the Hitler mustache, man. That is. Oh my god. His whole fucking face just opened up. Okay, that's terrifying. What is that? Other than a whole lot of notes. Nope. 
Yeah, this is like reminiscent of like German stuff here with the braided hair and like it's like very kind of Nazi esque. Whole lot of nope, 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 nope. Chronic world of Atomic Heart, a new cinematic and explosive action RPG. Discover details of the amazing and intricate okay. world created for the game. Atomic Heart's setting is a fictional USSR of 1955. Okay, so it is Russia in a top-secret military base built to manufacture robots known as Facility 3826. The mastermind behind this facility is a brilliant scientist by the name of Dmitry Sechenov, who pioneered a special liquid substance called polymer in 1936, Expanding on the formidable qualities of his invention, well, Russian, just Sechenov leave shit alone. managed to launch a Stop huge with neural that network yours. of AI assisted robots called Collective. To you. Leave other countries alone. This allowed robots to free the people from manual labor in favor of arts and science. Everything goes smoothly until 1955, when authorities plan to launch Collective 2.0 and introduce a new thought device allowing humans to control the network and issue commands with just the power of thought. Unfortunately, the launch of Collective 2.0 is sabotaged, leading to a technological nightmare. Robots attack humans, with hundreds of casualties among facility staff. You See, are Major Russians P3, don't fucking think. an elite soldier from the intelligence service. You are sent by Sechenov to investigate the circumstances of the incident, and restore the neural network. Your mission will take you across the scientific testing grounds of Facility 3826, which spreads like a fungal network throughout the Kazakh mountains. As you roam the base, you'll come across expansive scientific complexes, mysterious laboratories, above ground civilian infrastructure, I mean, it's cool looking, but terrifying. And discover we know bizarre underground like tunnels this. packed with spatial puzzles that even the most experienced players will enjoy. One thing you can expect is to never know what to expect. Be it horror, arenas, puzzles, or a plot twist with cinematic cutscenes. Put pressure on this wound. They try to save you. Why the hell should I believe any of this? You should be more careful. This place is a damn mad house. You're going to chill me. The hell are you? I've got eyes and ears everywhere, sweet cheeks. There's blood all over the place. <laughs> you really didn't tell her anything, did you? I never expected to see Victor like this, in these circumstances. Human casualties. And he has to be stopped! Poor oh, bastards. What the fuck happened here? <gasps> Who the fuck did this? Am I making myself clear, Comrade Sechenov? But you won't be traveling alone. Here is Charles, a polymer AI integrated into your experimental power glove. Charles is a by-the-book sidekick that will provide you with new objectives, story, and character details. It will also provide tidbits on Atomic Heart's looming secrets and even divulge a bit about your I shrouded history. I want to wear that glove, but you know. Charles doesn't only have a teacherly personality capable of mid-mission banter. It can also scan the area, hack robots, and other equipment at will. Through its power, you'll even be able to deploy energy shields and wield electric, freezing, and telekinetic powers. 
Prove that you are human, Pioneer Nichaya. Communicating with other characters, it's entirely up to you to decide what you will say in dialogue, allowing you to enjoy an array of interesting responses. He's creepy looking. You will have a vast territory to explore. Facility 3826 includes five giant complexes with more than 25 hours of gameplay to beat. Traveling around the world is easier with the aero train or any other mode of transportation still working. But you'll have oh, to stay on your toes since any action may attract unwanted attention and result in your death. As you fight your way out of this nightmare, keep in mind that all robots are interconnected and controlled by the Collective's AI. This is both their strength and Achilles' heel. Take control of the Collective's systems, network control terminals, cameras, hawks, volans, and repair hives that restore destroyed hubs of the Collective, defeated robots, and other elements of the network. Hmm. Interesting. But robots won't be your only enemies. Scientific plants, sprouts, can find a body and mutate. Oh, okay, so that's where the human plant people came from. There are also Qushas, who are truly formidable opponents. Oh. But what makes them special is that they can summon sprouts. You'll have a big problem unless you can keep the two of them from fusing with each other. To fight dangerous robots and mutated creatures, lay your hands on a cutting-edge arsenal, ranging from a sharp axe for melee combat to a modified electric rifle or a cool grenade launcher. That is kind of neat looking. Melee like weapons will help you accumulate energy that can then be spent with your energy weapons. When it comes to your firearms, however, you'll have to scour through the environment to find bullets or craft them yourself using crafting machine Nora and add elemental effects to them. Your fighting style will depend on your choice of weapons and skills. Nice Combine firearms and energy or melee weapons as well as glove abilities and use them wisely. There were more plant people. Install additional upgrades for your weapons, such as an extended mag, a collimator scope, an upgraded barrel case, a tactical grip, or a silencer. Search every piece of furniture, computer, and corpse to collect materials that can be used to modify your arsenal. I wonder if you run out Become of bag space. unstoppable. That's one thing I always, I pick up everything, so I always run out of bag space, so that's my biggest pet peeve. Okay, creepy ballerina chick. Finally. Whether you're a hardcore player in need of a frenzied, gore-filled challenge, or an adventurer eager to explore this unique world full of crazy, gripping narratives, Atomic Heart can be molded to your ideal experience. Do you have what it takes to adapt and tame unfamiliar enemies and environments? And can you handle the shocking truth coming your way? Probably not. Shine light on deceit and unearth what Atomic Heart like really stuff. is. Just know one thing. In Atomic Heart, the price of like truth the will be paid so they're very good. As the utopian dream is not what it seems. And I don't like Russian shit. I've got friends in Ukraine. It is a very neat looking game. I try and avoid games that have Russian undertones and shit like that because I just fucking can't. Now with this war that's going on, I can't fucking support games that have Russian undertones and shit like that. I just can't. So, the the game has several different um, editions. There's the regular one for twenty three twenty twenty three ninety nine. There's the gold edition for thirty four ninety nine. There's a premium edition for thirty eight ninety nine. And let's look at some reviews. There were some like negative reviews I did see just kind of scrolling, like this one here had only like 18.8 .8 hours. It says the peaks at the beginning of the game fall short the rest of the way through. This one here has 22.2 .2 hours. They do recommend the game, but they only had like 9.4 hours at the, um, on their, <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's 2.30 in the morning. Um, 
that uh, they only had 9.4 hours on the game at the time of their review. English is my main language. Yes, um, I do sprechen die Deutsch just a little bit. <laughs> I also speak a little bit of French and a little bit of Spanish and a little bit of Japanese and some Cherokee and some American Sign Language. And um, I, I also speak a little bit of Cherokee. So, Oseyo. Anyways, um, so it says this one here says great potential, horrendous execution, which, you know, for a thumbs up to say horrendous execution, it says I struggle to say not recommended though on sale. I can't describe it any better than that. It's so freaking cool and so fun at every interval um, that it, it, it works until the devs apparently decide that they don't know what type of game they're making or it feels like a train that veered off the track suddenly into the nearest wall for no apparent reason. Oh, shit. Let me click read more. Um, the boss design... When you hit the first boss, enemy Rolly or Rolly Boy... So I guess technically the second. It's some of the worst I've ever seen in a video game. Okay, maybe it's it's a bit exaggerated, but it's infuriated because everything about it is so cool in concept, except the devs apparently think that they have a game where the player character moves like some um, uh, motherfucker from Titanfall and you can have... And as fast style boss that immediately and relentlessly closes distances on you. Oh, that would be terrifying. Which would work, except that the game is designed around slow, clunky feeling combat with limited movements. Oh, that's even more terrifying. So guess what? It feels out of place and absolutely freaking horrendous to play through as you can't get away from the giant enemy basically capable of one hitting you. Oh, that's even worse. And every friggin' time you have to go through the same in-game cutscene to start the fight again. Wait, you can't, like, hit escape and get out of it? That's horrible. And why? Come on. There are other examples, but that's basically, in a nutshell, uh, the writing is similar. Fantastic concepts, great atmosphere, and when the character, for some reason... They decided to be a Giga Edge Lords or something. It's worth it at like 20 bucks because it's fun for sure. But Christ, what were they thinking with some of this stuff? So many things are so good, but at the execution and design choices are just straight up baffling. You can clearly see areas where they were big chunks of potential that just feel wasted. Edit. Also, in the accessibility settings, do yourself a favor and just turn on auto QTE. It's there. Honestly, I'm it's I'm quite comically sick of the QTEs in the game design and turn it on and makes the stealth system feel slightly less terrible. Yet another baffling design uh, decision that uh, there as well from the design perspective. Um Oh, this one got a product refund. Thank God for Steam refunds. Saw the game on sale and decided to finally try it myself upon this game announcement and following trailers. I was excited to play it upon release, but was hesitant due to early reviews and concerned by the persons I trust. While the art style and presentation, similar to Bioshock, which I genuinely adored, reeled me in and... Uh, reeled me in, uh, reeled me the hell in. Needless to say, they were right. The gameplay is quite solid, both melee and range. The music sound design is very well done. However, the story is confusing. Dialogue is atrocious and worst of them all, those nonsense puzzles. They begin quite unique and fun. I'll give them that, but further in their uh, convoluted and illogical. I'm too old to be unnecessarily patient with these games. Such a waste. So, all right, let's go do some photos. I mean, it, I mean, I think the graphics look really good. Um, let me get myself moved. I like the little ice ball. These like plant people though, they're kind of terrifying. Kind of terrifying. The graphics look really nice. But I do have something against games that are kind of Russian based. The arm hair, the arm hair looks really bad. Like, that's like, 
Okay, like, I don't grow a whole lot of leg hair for a girl because, like, I barely shave. Um, like, I have to shave my armpit hair, like, every other day or I look like I'm growing up a, a patch of forest hair because um, dark because I am of German descent. So, but, like, I barely shave my leg hair and that's what my leg hair looks like if I don't shave it for, like, 10 years. But, like, that arm hair could be much better. I mean, with the way that the graphics look in this game, that's, that's some pretty bad arm hair looking. Like, I mean, even his, like, facial hair looks so much better than that arm hair. She was, like, interesting in the scenes, like, the cut scenes and stuff that you see her in. That was terrifying when it flipped around. Terrifying. Like, nightmare fuel. She was kind of cute until she spun around, too. Yeah, the plant people, the half plant people, terrifying. I thought it was cool when they were talking about how the the uh, guns and different types of weapon types could be like modified and upgraded and changed. I like this. This one here was the one that spun and it's got all these like little axe heads and stuff on it, but it also does like lightning. I like that weapon design. She's cute. This was creepy. Like the unicorn horn thing here and then sliced her up the middle. I just still don't understand the German-esque braid here. I mean, I know they did that in Russia too, but I don't understand the whole like bat ballerina thing with the unicorn horn and why she sliced her up the middle and... I don't know. I don't know. So... What are your guys' thought on Atomic Heart? Are you guys going to pick it up on sale? I mean, the people that picked it up for $23, it's 60% off. It's $23.99. you guys going to pick it up? Who's going to pick it up? Um, I mean, I'm still waiting for Frostpunk 2 to come back out. Which, by the way, Frostpunk 2 is supporting the war efforts in Ukraine. Russian assholes, again, just bombed a... Um, an orphanage that was taking care of children. The Russians decided they wanted to bomb an orphanage. And so um, the studio that is producing, um, let me pull it up really quick. The 11-bit studio just put up an announcement on their community post where they are donating to, um, I think it's called Project 8. I have to translate it one second. Okay, so, I mean, because um, 11-Bit Studio is a Polish game. It says that they're donating $50,000 in um, revenue generated for Indika, I-N-D-I-K-A, to support U Ukrainian kids receiving treatment in an O-H-M-A-T-D-Y-T children's hospital in Kiev, um, which was targeted by a Russian missile attack. This was posted five days ago. I am filming this on July 18th. Um, I will be posting, let me grab a copy. Um, I'll grab this information here. Um, and I will also include this as a clip in the video. Um, but they will be also, I asked for a copy of like, I said, hey, is there any way that you could like, share a link or something where we can also like donate because I also want to be like donating for my main channel um any like proceeds or whatever I want to also try and donate to the hospital for the foundation as well I don't earn a whole lot on my videos on my main channel so I will also be donating to the hospital because I have friends in Ukraine this war sucks um, Russia needs to be stopped um, so for any proceeds for my main channel that, um, this video, the atomic heart video earns, I will be donating to this hospital as well. So if you see like a, uh, proceeds for this video, we'll be going, I'll see, I know there's a way to turn this video into a charity, um, for my main channel, not the glam gamer, uh, channel. I don't 
because this this channel doesn't the glam gamer channel doesn't earn uh, money but my main channel does so um, I'll turn it into a charity earning video um, I will make sure that I will figure out how to turn this video into a donation only video and that money will go to the hospital only in Kiev Ukraine because Russian people are being assholes so because this is a Russian based or a game based on a Russian type location I wanted to bring that up in this video also any of my Frostpunk videos I'm going to see about um, when I start streaming those or anything like that I'm going to be turning those videos into donation videos as well because 11-bit studios is also um, going to be donating proceeds and stuff like that for Ukraine as well because they are a Polish based company so I wanted to mention that as well because they just posted this so I wanted to make sure that I mentioned that and I'm going to be figuring out how to donate from my previous videos from um, Frostpunk 2 uh, so that I can turn those into like donation donation videos from my main channel so anyways um Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I I normally don't like get all like crying and stuff on these types of videos, but it's been a rough day for me. My friend Adriana died. Um, well, it was yesterday morning, but she died from COVID. And so I've kind of been hit hard the past like 24 hours anyways in the fact that the war in Ukraine is still going on. So it just kind of hit hard. The fact that this I kind of recognize the theme of the video being Russian anyway, so I wanted to make sure that I brought this up because as a gamer and stuff, the video games that um, are representative of certain countries and stuff like that and war games and stuff, they do kind of hit home for me. So anyways, um, I will let you guys go. If you do want to donate, I will find if there's a way um, or a link for Kiev. I will also reach out to Angel and find out if there's some sort of link or something or a um, charity or something that uh, he wants to donate to specifically. And I will see if he has um, somebody or a charity or something that helps him and his family because he does not live in Kiev. He lives, you know, further out from that, um, they are still all affected by the war um, in his home country. And so I will see what helps him and his family the most and see where he would like me to donate. And um, we'll see what we can do to help him and his family out over there since they still live in Ukraine. So anyways, hopefully you all are having a fantastic day or night wherever you are. And I will see you guys later. Bye.